Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and today we will be looking at Sputnik, Creature and Origins Explained. Excellent, gory, and nail-biting. This is precisely how Igor Abramenko's feature directorial debut, Sputnik, can be described. And while it's true that this Russian science fiction horror flick was scheduled to premiere worldwide at the 2020 Tribeca Film Festival, the movie eventually had a video-on-demand release in Russia. Wondering how that turned out? Not only was the film streamed by over 1 million viewers, making it the biggest release on all platforms in over two years, but it also ended up being a recipient of 14 nominations. It won the Asteroid Award for the Best International Science Fiction Film at the Trieste Science and Fiction Film Festival. To those who have seen this movie, you will know that we are about to hint at Ridley Scott's Alien. Given that Abramenko's brilliantly staged the imperative stalking and bloodbath with just a right blend of elegance and terror. So much so, that one will literally fail to recall that they have actually seen such a thing many a times before. Add to this, the heavy Russian vibe, along with the spanking new creature, one that's absolutely terrifying to look at, by the way, and what you have in front of you is a magnetic movie powerful enough to sweep the floor along with its Hollywood cousins. So, in today's video, we are going to talk about the origins of the Sputnik creature, exploring it in detail. Vikatoy? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The movie. During the last hot period of the Cold War in 1983, two Russian cosmonauts who are occupied in orbital research encounter something bizarre on their way back to Earth. The duo see something moving outside, and their spaceship breaks down while re-entering, crashing in Kazakhstan. One of the crewmen, Konstantin, manages to survive the incident and is taken to a remote military facility. Maybe it's because of my training that I can't be hypnotized. The officer in charge, Colonel Semidarov, commissions Dr. Tatiana Kimnova, a young psychiatrist known for her unconventional methods, to study Konstantin, who is being kept under quarantine. Initially, she is not told the main reason for Konstantin's solitary confinement, but it doesn't take her much longer to discover that the cosmonaut has brought back along with him an alien inside his very own body without his knowledge. The colonel, in due course, discloses that she was brought there in the first place to figure out how to safely separate Constantine from the creature, since they seem to have developed some kind of entirely symbiotic relationship. The creature has been dwelling in Constantine's esophagus, coming out during the night while the host has been sleeping. It regularly leaves his body between 2.40 and 3.10 at night. The alien was gaining from his nutrients, and the astronaut was making an unbelievable recovery from the injuries that he received on crash landing. As part of the plan, Dr. Tatiana approaches Constantine and tells him that she knew all about his kid that he had deserted at an orphanage. She implied that he wasn't a national hero, but he is thought of but a coward, one who just didn't care about his own son. Tatiana does all this to deliberately stress him out, and it's via this method that she learns that the creature inside Constantine gets affected by hormone levels. Tatiana also discovers a horrifying, disturbing truth about the creature. The monster does not really feed on whatever its host eats. Instead, it devours humans. In this case, Colonel Semidarov was providing fodder in the form of live prisoners. The creature, showing its terrifying self to the victims, enhances their fears, and that leads them to releasing hormones called cortisol, from which the alien gets its nourishment. Tatiana feels shocked, disgusted, and equally horrified when confronting the colonel, only to be told the reason why they are all there in the first place was to find a way to transform the extraterrestrial being into a superweapon that they can control and use on behalf of the Soviet army. Even if our methods are unsavory. You just see it as a weapon, that right? Yes. 
Although the psychiatrist agrees to cooperate, she has grown a caring bond with Constantine and reveals to him about the parasitic creature living inside him and the military's plans. Later, she even shows him the carcasses of the humans that the creature had slaughtered and the other cosmonaut aboard the spaceship with him, who, by the way, was still alive. Apparently, he was not infected by the creature as he had cancer and the creature had somehow been able to sense it. Also, the fact that Constantine was quite aware of the creature and its activities was an appalling revelation to Tatiana. He tells her that he was willing to go to any extent to get out of the facility and take care of his son. Tatiana, on finally having made up her mind, decides to help out Constantine. With the aid of another doctor in the military facility, she chalks out an escape plan, showing Constantine a syringe that will simulate a similar kind of disease that his fellow cosmonaut had. She explains that this would drive the creature out, and hopefully it could even die while it's outside the body of the host. However, they are able to escape only to be attacked by the colonel who sends a team after them. Please don't shoot. Open fire. This leads to Tatiana getting wounded and Constantine injecting himself with the syringe. Of course, the alien emerges out of the host and ends up killing the entire response team. Taking this chance, the duo runs away, but Constantine collapses on the way, making Tatiana realize that he would not really last without the alien because they were fully symbiotic. They can't be separated. She surrenders when the colonel catches up with them. Tamiradov had brought along the heavily injured creature to force it back inside Constantine. But as fate would have it, Constantine has the creature kill the colonel along with his men, setting himself and Tatiana completely free in the process. Having been alerted of the horrific trials carried out by the colonel, more authorities begin descending in on them, and Constantine sees no other option than to shoot himself and things once and for all. The movie ends with Tatiana adopting Constantine's son and disclosing to the audience that she herself had lived in an orphanage when she was a young girl. The alien creature in the movie. While the true origin, nature, and even capabilities of the alien creature have been left majorly unexplained, for which we have the limited plotline of the story to blame, there is one thing that we can say for sure. The creature featured is a symbiotic life form. But having said that, any elucidation Regarding this relatively unique and mysterious creature has to start with the title of the movie, which is called Sputnik. For those of you who are unaware of what the word stands for, it is a Russian term, which means companion or a fellow traveler. No wonder, the title of the flick acts more like a wordplay, corroborating three different things at once. The first stands for Earth's first artificial satellite put in orbit around the planet, called Sputnik 1. The second stands for the fact that the creature the movie has on display is a symbiotic organism, or in other words, a companion life form. Thirdly, the companion is more like a fellow traveler of an astronaut during his journey back home. Mark our words when we tell you that there are absolutely no clues to the creature's origin. This leaves us with very little information on what or which aspect to settle down with. We don't even know if the creature is actually from the outer space, or say another planet, or even Earth for that matter. The fact that it's bonded with a human and also consumed them makes it very possible that the creature might have shared some kind of a history with the human species. After all, it does have arms and legs, something that signifies wherever it came from did live on land, and it was not some kind of predominantly aquatic creature. There is a high chance of the creature living on high up structures like trees because of its incredible ability to leap very far and climb very fast. Its exceedingly territorial nature hints at the fact that it was probably an apex predator from wherever it came from. One can see its chest and the underside of the face comprising of a huge mouth with teeth, which it would simply use to rip things to shreds, mostly humans. It also would not be wrong to say that the creature was kind of spider-like, especially given the manner in which it moved and looked. The alien creature was heavily dependent on sight, and let's not forget those eyes. It had about eight of them, 
Speaking of the creature's life cycle, it seems pretty constant, maintaining the same phase of growth from the time it first makes contact with Constantine to the time it dies. So, one can really not come to the conclusion that the creature was implanted, more like an embryo, or was fully developed when it implanted itself into its host. Coming back to the movie, we all know how the creature feeds on human fear, specifically relying on cortisol, without which it would grow weak. Additionally, because of the interdependent relationship that it shares with its host, who knows, it might even die alongside Constantine if it doesn't get the right amount of hormones. Every time the creature is seen feeding, it along with its host gets stronger. Well, joining the dots, you can actually conclude that the creature not only has the ability to use the body of humans as hosts, but it also has the power to gauge the levels of cortisol within human beings. Next, we know that it is quite capable of sensing diseases within humans. This is precisely why it chose Constantine over his fellow cosmonaut. However, whether these skills are merely evolutionary or even supernatural is still a matter of debate. Also, another intriguing thing about the creature is its ability to move in the Earth's environment. It gets adapted to the atmosphere and even breathe in oxygen. All this is very similar to donning an astronaut suit in a hostile environment. It can also read and listen to the memories of its host, and upon exiting the body of the host, the bond works conversely as well, as if both were a part of each other. Now, if you look at the way the creature moves, you will find it bears a striking resemblance to the way a Komodo dragon moves. Mind you, these reptiles played a major visual reference for the creature. In fact, director Apramengo initially wanted the alien to be a concoction of both practical and CGI effects. However, the Russian special effects houses were not successful in delivering an entirely convincing practical creation. So it goes without saying that he opted to go 100% CGI, and it was a complete masterstroke working wonders. The creature that looks a lot more like a cross between a cobra, a jumping spider, and Kaleido, the Cloverfield monster, is extremely well designed. With a small stature and the fact that it was literally capable of doing so much damage makes it all the more terrifying and ghastlier. One of the best things about the genre of horror is that it acts more like a setup to let the storytellers get ambushed by the very basic human fears, yearnings, and conflicts. They create these allegories that terrorize both our security and stability, without having to worry about the viewers grumbling about too equivocal or too precise. Putting stress on the creature living inside Constantine, we think it comes from somewhere beyond Earth, but the manner in which it is depicted in the movie alters it into some kind of intangible, fiendish, or even demonic force. Just imagine a mass of insectile flesh, one that can actually shrink itself and fit inside a human stomach. and can then even unfold to say about five feet in height, expanding its skinny arms and legs. Boasting a running time of 113 minutes, with brilliant cinematography work by Maxim Zukov and an outstanding musical score by Oleg Karpachev, this 2020 film remains an absorbing, satisfying sci-fi horror opus, and all because of the terrifying creature on display. No reason to miss out on this one, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel, if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, and be safe.